welcome back now in this part of the lecture we are going to learn about the technologies which can track your supply chain beyond the rfid um, capability capable area by rfid capable area we mean the area which is under which is uh, covered under the rfid reader and we know that we really cannot uh, track the items through this technology once it is out of the premises of a stakeholder like that of the manufacturer or the uh, warehouse owner or the retailer now what happens to the item as they are out of their premises let us say premises of the warehouse and moves along the uh, along the uh, road it, why road it may be going through other uh, mediums as well other transport network but as they move along the transport network how exactly you are going to track your cargo the corresponding technologies are your global positioning technologies and uh, allied ones now this is what i was telling you once the items skus and consignments are out of this rfid antenna coverage they cannot be tra tracked so therefore those vehicles are to be tracked now by gps now what is this gps this global positioning system this is of course all of our mobiles now have this gps when we book a cab we know that position of the cab can be traced back you can track the uh, vehicle and you can book the vehicle and so on let us have a little bit overview of this global positioning system it is a space based radio navigation system owned by the united states government and operated by the united states air force it does not require the user to transmit any data like that of rfid and it operates independently of any telephonic and internet reception though originally it was meant for military uses now uh, it is for civilian use here i would like to mention one thing as well though we are talking about this gps from the united states government in fact other countries like European Union has their own GPS like system. India also is coming up maybe in 2-3 years time it may also become commercialized. But right now whatever we are talking it is about that United States government's uh, global positioning system. Now these are the typical components of GPS. It has three major components a space management component the user segment and the control segment the space management segment is basically the set of satellites which move around the earth user segment is the device your mobile or the gps device you put in your vehicle those are the user segment and in order to control this space segment to see that whether these satellites are working fine or not and instructing these satellites you have this control segment. So, this control segment consists of 5 ground stations located around the world that make sure that the satellites are working properly. Now, in order to look when you are using a GPS device let us say your mobile phone from the mobile phone or from the vehicle mount uh, the, uh, the interface mounted on the car you know the location of the entity who is carrying the device so which means the device has some kind of facility to get the data from the space segment and calculate its own position so this is how 
the GPS works. This GPS satellites broadcast radio signals providing their location, whose location? GPS's location, status and precise time T1 from onboard atomic clocks which are there, which are mounted on the satellites. Now, this GPO radio, uh, GPS radio signal travel through the space at the speed of light. A GPS device receives the radio signal and noting their exact time of arrival, it uses this signal to calculate its distance from the satellites in view. In fact, after getting this, this is the, the some generic um, way of calculating that distance of the GPS device from the satellite. Uh, once it knows its position from three satellites, in a two dimensional plane it knows its position on the earth. Once it is, is gets the data from four satellites, it knows its position not only in two dimension latitude and longitude, also its height. In fact, it uses a principle called triangulation to calculate this, calculate the position. But anyway, that is we are not going to discuss about that. In fact, to remind you while talking about the RFID location problem of locating a particular item inside a warehouse, I was talking about the same principle of triangulation. You need in order to locate a particular SKU which is attached with the RFID tag, you need information from at least three antenna. Or to know its height at what level of uh, the at what uh, rack of the item is placed, you need the signal from four antennas and using the same principle of triangulation that is used here in case of GPS, you can calculate the position. In fact, in warehouse management systems, it is not done in the similar way. In fact, all the um, aisles etcetera, they will be their position etcetera will be associated with uh, the database and uh, accordingly using some other uh, method the positions are determined. But this is again another way of uh, determining the position using the principle of triangulation. But anyway, let us come back to GPS again. <coughs> now, uh, the once the GPS device knows its distance from at least four satellites, it can use that is the geometry that I was talking about the principle of triangulation to determine the location on the earth in three dimensions. Then GPS master control stations track the satellite via global monitoring network and manage their health on a daily basis. Now ground antennas around the world send the data updates and operational command to the satellites. Now, if you would like to use GPS for vehicle management system, for tracking your consignment, your logistics, for your logistics operation, if you would like to use it, if you would like to use it, the situation is bit different. Different in the sense, your, uh, you will be definitely as the if the GPS device is mounted on a truck which is carrying your items, the truck itself knows its position. But if you would like to instruct the truck about something, this is not the right way. You need the location of this truck back as I was telling only the driver of this vehicle or the people sitting on this vehicle through the GPS device know their own position. Now the question is, if you would like to give an instruction to the vehicle, the driver sitting in the vehicle, what would you do? You need to get the location data of the vehicle. GPS will not be giving you that data. So what do you do? you have to attach 
some kind of GPRS model in the vehicle itself and that will be transmitting its own position and through the mobile network you should be getting it in your server. Now once you have this data, you can run any kind of decision support module to provide instruction to the vehicle driver and send it back through this mobile network back to the driver. Driver through its user interface mounted on the vehicle will be knowing these instructions and work accordingly, we will be knowing details little bit later. However, while making decisions at this end about the driver's position and giving him further instruction, you may require another piece of software where you will be shown the position of the vehicle and that software should be able to give you provide you the data access about the location details as well as uh, as well as help you in decision making. So, that software is called GIS geographical information system. This GIS uses GPS technology for location purpose, but GIS adds data that allows the user to make intelligent and strategic um, intelligent strategic and tactical decisions. Now, what is this geographical information system? This is a software system with capability for input storage and manipulation um, and output of geographic or spatial information. This geographic information system can be used as a database for storing the transportation data as well, which help in that um, fleet management. Then the primary advantage of using GIS as a database for transportation data is the fact that the GIS can integrate the spatial data, uh, spatial data and display the attribute data in a user chosen format. And in fact, you can also integrate you can get this data and combine it with that of your enterprise data to take better decisions. So, in this GIS file, the data it has a layered architecture in various layers, it stores the data uh, about the spatial information and these coded files are called topologically integrated geographic encoding and referencing tiger files. Now, this GPS is widely used for collecting this spatial data. Now, the systems which chiefly use GPS as a spatial data source for a GIS are called GPS GIS integrated systems. So, for tracking the vehicles, tracking the consignments across the supply chain, beyond the uh, coverage of RFID, the systems that are used are this GPS GIS integrated systems. So, this GIS systems, this is a schematic diagram of GIS where the data input comes from GPS and stored in the geographic database, then it can help in um, answering the queries of the user and generating reports and it has capability some capability of transforming transforming and analysis of the data. There are many applications of GPS GIS integrated system in automobiles, airlines, agriculture, sports, law enfor enforcement and so on. Out of this today we are going to look at one of the applications in little bit more detail like how uh, along with this data decision support can be attached to take uh, certain to help in certain take help taking in certain business decisions. Now, look at a typical vehicle routing problem we are going to discuss about the dynamic vehicle routing problem and its data source real, uh, which is which is coming from this GPS GIS integrated system. 
Before that, let us first understand what a vehicle routing problem is. Look at this, we have a depot and we have many customers. Now the question is, what is the optimal set of routes for a fleet of vehicles to traverse in order to deliver to a given set of customers? Should we use one vehicle or more vehicle? And once we decide the number of vehicles, how exactly we should be, um, we should instruct the vehicle to move around so that with minimum minimal transportation cost, all the customers are covered. Now, this vehicle routing and scheduling problem consists of two sub problems. First, depending on the number of vehicles to group the customers so that they are close enough. So, first you have to cluster the customers and second is within a cluster you have to define the optimal tour uh, to cover all the entities. Now, look at this. Suppose we have certain algorithm to solve this problem, the, the diagram that we were showing already suppose for this one, this one you have now 3, you now require it appears that you require 3 vehicles and this is the optimum path that has to start from the depot and follow this path and come back, start from the depot, follow this path and come back and so on. The route is the, uh, here the route is the total number of deliveries made by a single vehicle and two is their sequence. The solution to these sub problems result in the routes and tours that minimize the total transportation cost. Uh, this particular problem has many variations. It may have additional constraints that, uh, that all the vehicles within the fleet have uniform carrying capacity for a single commodity and it is for a single commodity. Uh, it may be additional constraints so that customers are stops has an associated fixed time interval during which the pickup and delivery must be made. It can be a capacitated vehicle routing problem that includes both vehicle capacities and the time window. Uh, it can be a VRP with multiple depots and vehicle fleets. Periodic vehicle routing problem that allows service to be extended beyond M days instead of a single day service. Split vehicle routing problem in which some customers may actually be serviced by more than one vehicle. It can be stochastic vehicle routing problem in which more one or more uh, problem components are random and present with some probability. Uh, it can be vehicle routing problem with satellite facility where, um, where the, um, the transportation network may be remotely monitored, the real time vehicles it can be called. So, again in a broad classification this vehicle routing problems, all these vehicle routing problems I, either can be a static vehicle routing problem or it can be a dynamic vehicle routing problem. The static vehicle routing problem is, is the one where all information relevant to the planning of the routes is assumed to be known by the planner before the routing process begins. Now, information relevant to the routing does not change after the, after the routes are constructed, but in fact in reality this is hardly the case. So, uh, we have the dynamic vehicle routing problem where not all the information relevant to the planning of the routes is known by the planner when the routing process begin. The information can change after the initial routes have been constructed. More complex, it is a, a see as such vehicle routing problem is a very, is a combinatorial problem, it is a NP hard problem. It is a combinatorial NP hard problem, anyway we are not going to discuss any algorithmic details of that, but NK, NP hard problems are very complex problems. And as the uh, size of the problem grow, here the size in this context, the size is number of customers a number of vehicles as well, as they grow the problem becomes more complex. The time increases solving the problem increases exponentially in fact. Now, 
uh, these dynamic vehicle routing problems are even more complex than that of static VRP and they need real time algorithm by means by means of real time algorithm we mean the algorithm which are which solve the problem within uh, within a short time in a reasonable way they cannot be giving you the optimal solution as the getting the optimal solution itself requires a lot of time, but they will be solving in a quite reasonable way. So, that within a specific time you can get the result and effectively instruct the corresponding vehicle for any um, additional in instruct for any additional detail. So, in a vehicle routing problem let us say again we have the depot and the customers. There are some static customers whose demand is already known, but in between some dynamic customers also come in who immediately request and their request is important enough to be resolved immediately that uh, as well as if it is resolved it also decreases your cost. So, depending on the current position of the vehicle it need to be now instructed. In fact, you can see it is quite analogous with the um, with the material equipment movement that we are discussing with the warehouse management system in one of the earlier lectures. In fact, core of all this is your traveling salesman problem which is about covering the nodes with minimum time in the right sequence so that you do not unnecessarily repeat any path. So, these are some real life examples of dynamic vehicle routing problem, dynamic fleet management where here, here the situation is several large scale trucking operations require real time dispatching of vehicles for the purpose of collecting or delivering sequ sequences. This is important savings can be achieved by optimizing these operations. Then is your vendor managed distribution system. In fact, about vendor managed inventory system we have already discussed in one of the earlier classes. In vendor managed system the distribution companies estimate customer inventory level in which uh, in uh, level in which in, in such a way to replenish them before they run out of stock. Hence, demands are known beforehand in principle and all customers are static. However, because the demand is uncertain some customers may be a small percentage can run out of stock and have to be serviced urgently because it is the responsibility of the supplier to replenish the inventory. So, in that case the supplier the supplier truck which is already carrying some items from some other uh, retailers can be instructed in fact should be instructed to um, to immediately fulfill the demand for the retailer where the stock is um, I mean the where there is immediate need of stock replenishment. There are more examples of DVRP as well courier services this long distance courier needs to collect the locally outbound parcels before sending them to remote terminals to consolidate. Also the loads coming from remote terminals have to be distributed locally. See this most pickup uh, requests are dynamic and have to be serviced at the same day if possible. Then rescue and repair companies, there are several companies providing rescue and repair services like broken car etcetera and they get their requests in real time. Dial a ride systems like or you are booking a taxi etcetera. They can provide transportation services to people between given origin and destination fare. The customers can book a trip one day advance or make a request at a short notice. In fact, we have seen that where while booking online these taxis, we find out the we can actually on the map see on the map we can see which is the nearby taxi and we can call it, we can book it. So, this is also an example of a dynamic vehicle routing problem emergency services which comprises of police, firefighting, ambulance services, etcetera. 
they also belong to this category including the tab and cab services. Now, solving this we have been discussing so far about the vehicle routing problem then dynamic vehicle routing problem ok it is a problem and it needs a solution and that solution should give you a optimal um, or at least near optimal um, uh, solution so that your total transportation cost and uh, other stuffs are um, your um, cost is basically minimized. Now, if in such systems invariably there are two data sources, first the location data which comes from GPS and the network that we saw and second is the demand data. Consider about a vendor managed inventory system, the demand data will be coming from the enterprise system which collects the data um, which connects to the other enterprise systems through um, EDI or web services, these things we have already discussed this technology. And in fact, your transportation management system which will which is looking after managing this tracking these vehicles should be getting this location data from GPS GRS integrated system and getting the demand data either there will be a decision support system with routing algorithms etcetera and GIS which help in taking the decision and uh, show it to the user through the user interface and transmit back to the truck for further instruction. In fact, besides this routing algorithm if you have GIS in hand as I told you these algorithms are very complex and uh, all the constraints that are supposed to be considered due to increase in complexity they may not be handled. So, the solution and algorithms are also not exact. So, therefore, in order to the solution that you get out of these algorithms may be little bit adjusted manually and your GIS system which provides you a lot more details and uh, about the geographic positions of the special positions of the entities to be serviced and to be provided service with can uh, now be adjusted little bit by the decision maker and the solution of that should be sent back to uh, through uh, mobile network to back to the truck. So, that truck should be in a dynamic manner should be able to service the um, stakeholders. Thank you very much.